Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be telling you guys everything that I did to pass my C957 Applied Algebra course through WGU. So I started this course on April 18th and I just passed my OA on May 9th. So to start with, um, the first day I went ahead and tried to do the PA because I was like, well, I've already taken a quantitative reasoning class through Ivy Tech, so how hard could it be? Um, and when I opened up the PA, I soon realized that I did not know what was going on. So I stopped taking the PA, exited out of that um, because I had, well, what initially prompted me to do that was because I had heard it wasn't a hard class. So I was like, okay, well, maybe I maybe I do know something, but I was um, mistaken. <laughs> so the next thing I did was I tried to listen to um, Odin's videos because I had also saw online that all you need to do to pass this class is watch his videos. Um, so I started to watch the first video listed like in the supplemental resources but I felt like I still couldn't grasp like what was going on. So I'm like, okay, let me just stop that and let me actually read through the course material. So I started making my way through the course material and it did help. But with my notes, I feel like it was taking me so long because I'm like, my notes were like starting to get like this thick. And I'm like, I'm going to be in this class for forever, you know, take going through the course material. So, um, after meeting with my mentor, she was like, you know, come on, let's get this class done. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, let me just watch the videos. Okay. There you go. I'm like, let me try this again. Watch the four videos. I printed out the slides. Um, so I watched the videos, print out the slides. And then I did the problems with Odin as he was going along and then um, right before he would get to the answer, I would see if I um, could work out the answer for myself. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that I would recommend is, like I said, watch those four videos, print out the slides and try to work the problems out for yourself. Another thing that I did was I um, scheduled a tutoring session for myself. So I met with the tutor and then I also did the online like live coaching thing that's where you go on, like during specific hours, you go on to the live coaching, um, I think it's like WebEx or Zoom call, and then you're in a waiting room and then they will like assign you a professor or course instructor to help you with whatever it is that you need help with. So I did that too, and that also helped me. Um, I say use those resources, we're already paying for them, so go ahead and use your tutor, use your online coach. Um, another thing that helped me was attending the cohorts. So I attended the math and anxiety cohort, and that just kind of helped reshape my mind and reframe my thinking surrounding math. Cause I think I had a lot of fear and anxiety surrounding math. Cause, um, historically I haven't been the best at it, but I'm learning that, you know, I can change my mindset about, about it. And, um, it's not that I'm not good at it. It's just maybe I need to go a different route. And maybe I also need to free myself of some of those bad experiences that I've had with math. So I recommend um, going to that. Also, what helped me was I went to the C97 um, review session. And that helped out so much with Sarah Johnson. Um, that's the course instructor that um, did that cohort. And she just goes through a bunch of problems. I think the class, I think the cohort is like an hour or maybe two hours long. I can't really remember, but you just go through the problems with her and that helps out so much. She's so funny and it just helps you remember things um, better because you can hear like the different examples and things that she said and how she relates it to real life. So I highly recommend that. What else do I recommend? Um... Yeah, I just say just practice. Practice with your calculator. Make sure you get the right calculator. Practice with it. Um, memorize your formulas. Memorize your graphs. What else? Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, so I will add this too. So I was a little discouraged before um, 
before I signed up to take my OA because I took, so, okay. So remember that pre-assessment that I kind of stopped. So I decided to, after working a 12 hour shift, I decided to attempt it again. And I didn't get done until like 1.50 in the morning. I did not pass it. And so I was discouraged. And I'm like, okay, well, you did have a lot of breaks. And it, like, it is like, you know, you did just work a 12 hour shift. It's one o'clock in the morning. So maybe you're not, not or as sharp as you could be. So then the next day I retook the PA and, um, and like while I was going through the PA, all the answers that I had were like answers that I found on my whiteboard, but I still did not pass my PA. And I'm like, I cannot understand because I'm like, it's not like, you know, like sometimes when you take a test and you get your answer and then you look at the answers, you're like, my answer are nowhere near close to that. My, like mine were not like that. So um, after I got my results back, I looked through my answers and it's not like my answers were wrong. It's just that some of the answers were better. Like they gave more clarification or, um, yeah, I would, I would say most of the time the ones that I got wrong is because like there was a better answer. Um, so yeah. So I took that PA, like I said, so I had taken the PA twice at that point, still had not passed them. Then the next day I took the PA again, really slowed down, really made sure that like the answer that I was choosing was the best answer, you know, for that problem. And um, I passed. So then I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to schedule my OA for like an hour and 30 minutes later because I wanted to get my children fed, wanted to get them changed and then put them down for their naps or at least put them in their rooms while I was taking my test because the test is three hours long. So I, um, I did that, took my OA. I'm like, um, you know, I'm on a roll. So like, let me just go ahead and knock it out. Um, and that was really my, my biggest thing was like, once I pass the PA, I'll feel better about taking the OA. I know some people are like, well, I didn't pass the PA and they still take it. I like to pass the PA first that I feel like that's what makes me the most comfortable. And then I take the OA. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. I used my, um, whiteboard for every question, wrote everything out and, um, I prayed, um, I journaled about everything that I was feeling about the the test. I also use my anointing oil before the test, you know, just to, you know, give it up to God and just, you know, put myself in, put my best foot forward, I guess you could say. So yeah, I passed it. I'm so excited that I did because that class is giving me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> I feel like that's been a common thing, but I'm really trying to do better at that. It's just, it's just, it feels like there's just always a hill to climb. So, um, yeah. Anyways, that's how I pass um, C957. And um, I think that's it that I have for you guys. So if you're in that class, good luck to you. Make sure you know your formulas and make sure you watch the videos and you use the tutoring services and attend the cohorts. Um, that's all that I have for you guys. We are one step closer to becoming a nurse. Thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you the best of luck. All right, bye.